Well, good afternoon from one of my favourite parts of the world. I won't say exactly where, but it's in East Lothian. And I'm trying to contain my excitement because I've been fighting to attract this well-known artist to my gallery since we opened. And lo and behold, at her gorgeous house here in East Lothian, I'm going to introduce you to Gail Pope. Hello, Gail. Hi, David. I'm looking at Gail's look of trepidation and <laughs> worry, and I don't think she's one bit worried here um, in her lovely studio. And so, Gail, lots of people know your paintings. We've got wonderful work, which is coming to Ballot, and we'll talk about that in a second. But what I'd like to talk about, Gail, is, yes, yeah, she'd been in East Lothian for a long time, but life didn't start off here. And I'd like to know about we, Gail, and was there always an interest in art? Yeah, well, I was brought up in Dundee, um, and at primary school in Dundee, at Glebelands Primary, that's where I, I realised that I could paint, I could draw. Um, I won a few few prizes at primary school. Um, I remember distinctly an artist, a professional artist coming into our class and he wanted us, I think I must have been about eight or nine at the time, in primary three or four, and he uh, wanted us to paint something within the classroom. And I painted the pupils in the classroom in the way an eight-year-old would paint them. And I remember painting this painting and putting black lines around everything. Um, and this guy seemed to love this painting. And anyway, it, it, it won, there was a prize. And the prize was that you um, got to exhibit your painting outside the headmaster's room. Oh. Um, and that one. The, That's quite a profound one. memory, really, yeah. to have. Because yeah. It was a long, long time after that, and I'd like to know more about the story before you became a professional artist. Did did you feel at that age that becoming an artist would just be impossible? I never, at that age, I never really thought about it. Art came quite easily. Um, there was no studying for it or anything, you know. Um, I, I actually wanted to go to Duncan of Jordanson, um, but it didn't happen. Because uh, mum and dad wanted me to go and get a job, a real job, yes, in a bank, yes, which I did in TSB, and that, to be honest, I loved it. Actually, I absolutely loved it. So, to be honest, that was the direction I went in, rather than uh, art at that time. And then, through you know, life goes on, and it's it's interesting. I think the people who listen to these videos are fascinated because many of them would have loved to be an art, you know, so many people say, I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that. They don't do it. Mm -hmm. But you've done things that have appealed to you in life. And, you know, there was banking. And then for a spell, you went to classes at Glasgow School of Art, wasn't it? Yes, I did. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I didn't do a degree. Um, it Because at, at that time, I was actually studying for uh, a beauty therapy qualification uh, at the college, Glasgow College of Commerce. And I decided to do night classes at Glasgow School of Art. And it was purely drawing. It was all drawing. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Loved it. I find it fascinating, Gil, because you were also, I won't say this too loud, but a well-known Scottish athlete in your day as well. So you've done athletics, you've done banking, um, makeup. And it's a great story that will really inspire so many people to say, well, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I? So you were probably getting without saying too much, because it would make it look as if you're about this age now. <laughs> but you were probably late 40s, really, before you became a full-time artist, am I yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Late 40s, about 50. Yeah, about 50, definitely. So, on that note, what I'd like to do is, I this painting has come to Ballater. Look at it. It's breathtaking. Well, thanks talk, very much. Talk about the paintings, Gail, and who influenced you. In my work, yeah. in my paintings... Mary Fedden was a big influence oh, yeah. for me. I love her work. Oh, me too. It's like less is more, isn't it? They're, oh, they're so simple. Yeah, I loved, I loved her work. I painted under her influence, to be honest, for years. But to be, it was too painstaking, the, the stuff that I was doing. And I decided to sort of branch out a bit and loosen up a bit. And I did that about, started doing that about eight years ago. All was, um, pretty much all was oil, is it? No, this is, this is acrylic. That's acrylic, yeah. But it was when I was dealing, when I was doing that uh, older style, yeah. very similar to Mary Fedden, that what that was in a way. So now almost always acrylic? Yes, yes. And going, we were talking about 
some local artists who you know, not local artists, but Scottish artists who you I think you mentioned George Biddle when we were chatting earlier. Oh yeah, George. George was a great influence on me. He um, he helped me hone a lot of my technical skills in art, which was just wonderful. Uh, he also gave me a lot of encouragement, and a you know he saw potential, which was great, and it gave me confidence, which was wonderful. And not long after that, to be honest, I started exhibiting. I wanted to talk, Hale, about this painting. I think it's absolutely stunning. So, talking about, so this, this sort of, I may be jumping a bit too quickly here. Here we've got, um, what are they called again? Magnolias. Magnolias and Blossom. Um, and I tried to get a, a textured Yes, so it looks like you the touch the pottery. Yes, yeah. yes. It's not and, quite finished. It's still a work in progress, this one. And talking about pottery, you, you obviously have a love of the texture of an object. Yes, I love it. And I love to sort of the view of to be able to, to you know, know the difference between the different textures, and, you know, ceramics and, and iron and sort of wood and all that sort of thing. But this one's called the Japanese teapot. Yeah. Um, I love painting this one. This was one of the first ones where I started to loosen up with my painting skills, and this is in acrylic. And I love the the green, the colour of the green apples with the Japanese teapot as well, and the greys. And it's, I mean, you, you have a beautiful home here, and I think all your paintings have been so well displayed um, as well. But do you see your style changing and evolving at all, or do you feel you're, you've now got it right and you're concentrating on paintings like this? I think I'm more or less there on the style. I do tend to to change my style because I find it really restricting just doing the one style. Uh, and it depends on what I'm painting, to be honest. Um, my seascapes have a slightly different style from the the um, from the, the still lifes. But I, I'm going to be honest, Gail, I love your still lifes. I also, um, your, your landscapes are beautiful. But, you know, and it's funny because I'm not that knowledgeable or necessarily the biggest fan of figurative work, but you painted somebody who I think you were a big fan of, and it was a gorgeous painting, that, and I know it was snapped up in minutes of John Byrne. Yes, yes. I think well, maybe Tom will see a photograph of that and I'll drop it. What persuaded you to do that a few years ago? The internationally renowned photographer David Eustace did a, a series um, called Dear John, and I saw it on Facebook, and I saw this particular painting, that uh, the photograph that I painted of John, and I just absolutely loved it. I loved the colour of John's suit, the olive green and the gorgeous maroon-coloured cravat, and just the style was fabulous. I loved it. And I, I, so we're back to cloth and beautiful objects. Yeah. And he, yeah and he was very, it was all of these things, the textures, everything. Stylish, oh. really stylish. Um, but do you do you see you going back to to do more figurative or not really? No, I think I will in the future. Mm-hmm. Definitely will. Um, I've actually picked up on uh, seascapes just last summer, and they've been very successful with the galleries, and I've been thoroughly enjoying them. But I'd, I'd actually like to do seascapes on a really big scale, and yeah. um, so that's that's something for the future, and also semi abstract work too. Yeah, it's funny, Gil, because. What, what you thankfully you've allowed us to do, and I'm really grateful. Uh, Tom's going to a couple of the paintings which are coming to us. You've allowed to be photographed in there, in your house, to let us see how they drop in and how they look, and they'll be dropping in there by Tom as we speak. But I'm I'm curious, uh, you know, because your life has been interesting. You know, your athleticism, your business mindedness in the bank, and everything. And I'm looking at your objects all sitting around from top hats and porcelain and everything. Mm-hmm. When this painting here, which is utterly gorgeous, the whole idea, was it just you had a new pot, the flowers were in bloom? How did it come about? Well, to be honest, I did the pot from, a, I think it was from Interiors magazine, and I just absolutely loved this pot. Um the flowers were uh, fake flowers that I had. Um, 
the pieces of blossom again were from photograph, and I just basically painted them all together. Um, so there was nothing set up for me to paint. Yeah, I I love the fact that all artists are different with their ideas and the things. And you always you almost give me that sort of I don't know the impression, Gil, that you waking up in this gorgeous part of um, East Lothian. And it's almost given, well, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do this week? Is that is that correct? Am I got it wrong? Because there seem to be so many things that come into your mind. There's a mask there. Yeah, the Venetian masks. I love Venetian masks. Mm. And they, I've used these masks in quite, I've painted quite a few of them, actually. Um, I did one recently that sold down south um, called Dove and Venetian Mask. And uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it, do you know, Gail, it's a, very tranquil studio. It's a beautifully tranquil, stylish home. And, you know, I can only thank you for allowing you, because this this was a lot of persuasion to get Gail <laughs> Pope to agree to a video. And it's interesting, because Tom looked at us earlier and thought, gosh, there's something very Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee about the two of you. <laughs> well, you know, for the lovely Debbie, that's fine. But Paul's been dead for about five years, I think. So Thanks for that, Tom. But no, seriously, Gail, uh, you're, you're, to get your whole story and to be so honest about it is going to inspire others. And I can't wait to have, I think, six new paintings coming to Ballotin. Five or six, yeah. Six. 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 Yeah, six. So, definitely six. So, or you'll cut me in half. So, oh, very good. <laughs> so from Debbie and Paul, from David and Gail, thank you very much for allowing us to come to your lovely home and uh, wait to see the paintings. Mm.